Hello, folks. How are you? How's life in YouTube, you will? I'm doing just fine. I thought today, in the interest of being thorough with Bitwig, that we would talk about the delay one and delay two, but really, that would be a very short video. And also, in the interest of being interesting, uh, I thought I would relate it to some stuff. And, and so, therefore, we have mixing tricks using delay. Okay, I will say this, if you are, uh, if you want the full experience, I recommend using headphones or big speakers, you, you'll still get, you'll, you'll still get what I'm saying to you, uh, if you're using your laptop or a tablet or whatever, but when uh, good mixing is just the accumulation of a lot of small uh, changes of a lot of very subtle changes over every track in the song, and then and then it sounds like a major change. So the the problem here is that we're really we're talking about one track at a time, and so uh, with with headphones you'll really hear uh, what's happening when we change these subtle changes. With computer speakers or tablets, you'll you'll get the effect, uh, but it'll be a little bit different. Okay, all right, so. Uh, delay one and delay two. Let's check it out. All right, so what have I done? Well, so far, not much. I've loaded up some samples. Here's uh, two guitar samples that I created the other day. I'm even going to group them and call them guitar like that. And uh, those are muted. And I have this uh, loop from a Fender Rhodes piano. And then I thought, we'll bust out Raj, the happy Indian man, once again. And you guys all know him. It's this guy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> and, uh, and down here, I've created three effects tracks. Okay? So on the first one, uh, I'm actually going to put a reverb. And we'll just keep it muted for now. We'll use that a little bit later. Uh, the second one. I'm going to throw a delay two, because that's why we're all here, and a delay one on the first track. Do, 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 be, do, do. Okay, and we're going to take Raj here. Okay, good. And we've sent a full signal to all three of these delay tracks, and we've done it in post. That means when I turn down this volume, all these will turn, they'll turn down the feed to these, and you won't hear it. Because if I want to automate his voice downward then i don't i don't want the reverbs and and delays to continue on right if i don't want his voice i just don't want his voice i don't want, i don't want to have to worry about uh, uh automating the sense to it so anyway that's basically that's it so let's listen to his voice without anything on it okay pretty interesting uh, well, let's look at the delay two for a second here, and we all know the delay two. It's a pretty, pretty groovy little machine here. Uh, on this side, we have the left speaker. On this side, we have the right speaker, and then we can choose between uh, this. Is, if this is a bar from the first sixteenth note to the last sixteenth note, you're choosing at what point do I want a delay to occur, and then of course, uh, depending on how you set those, you get a different effect. Let's just unmute it. I haven't changed anything on this yet, and uh, let's just hear what it sounds like. Well, it's a cool effect if you're into psychedelic drugs, but in the interest of making a vocal stand out and a little more uh, thickened inside your track, especially if it's a dense mix, uh, this might not work out for you. It might be what you're after, but it might not be. And so there you go. That's simply you have the right speaker, left speaker, and then where in time you're going to change, you're going to have that delay. Of course, you can click this button, change it over to time based. So seconds, or you can leave it in uh, beat based. And then here we go is the feedback. And, and that's basically how many, how many delays or how long, or how do you explain it? It's like how many delays are actually going to occur. If I do this, uh, that the left speaker's delay will just keep delaying forever. It'll just go on and on forever okay uh and the cross feed is how much of this signal is being sent over to the right and so essentially if you were to do this you would get the most insane delay and uh well why don't we just press play and you'll see what i mean you know what i mean let's just turn some of these down so that I can get out of here. oh buddy that can get out of hand. 
pretty damn quick. And again, not too ideal for what we're trying to do here. This is the offset. So if you don't if you don't want it at the third sixteenth note, but you don't really want it at the fourth, well, you can set it a little bit like that. Okay, and that's basically all this is. Here's the detune and the rate, and this is essentially saying that the signal that delays, uh, you can detune it a little bit, and we can turn that up and have a listen as well. Do you hear it? That's pretty crazy. Anyway. Uh, I don't use this often, but you can. It just creates like a it's a mod effect, and you can leave it up a tiny little touch like that. Where is it usually? Uh, somewhere, whatever. It doesn't really matter. And then, of course, you can have a high cut and a low cut on the delayed signal, and that helps your brain distinguish what's the original sound and what's the regular sound. So if I turn them off, basically by doing that. <laughs> It's the exact same signal, just repeated, whereas if I do something like this... See, it's much easier to tell where the delays are, uh, because they're, they're, they're a slightly different sound. Well, not even slightly, they're quite a bit of a different sound. And so, uh, that's, that's a useful technique, to just, to, just to help separate the two if you're going to muddy up your track using a delay too. Okay, and then there's width. You know what width is and the mix, and you know what mix is. And then, of course, the feedback effect. So this it's important to know that if I want a signal to affect what's going into this delay, I would put it here. If I want to affect the signal of everything coming out of the delay, I put it there. But if I want to affect the signal of only the delayed and leave the originals alone, I would put it in the feedback effect. And that's that's pretty interesting. And we've talked about before how the Valhalla Shimmer is basically them just putting a, a pitch shifter inside here and tuning it up an octave because then every time a delay goes through the pitch shifter goes up an octave and then up another one and up another one up until infinity and then that's how you get those those shimmery sounds so anyway that's base that's the delay to explain but let's use it now to take raj the happy indian man and make him sound uh a little thicker so i'm going to take this off and i'm actually going to put this down at i don't know like 18 milliseconds on the left side and let's do i don't know like 27 milliseconds on the right side and i'm going to turn down the feedback quite a bit and i don't think i want any cross feed actually uh let's see and we'll turn that guy up and we'll actually open this up completely turn these off let's just hear what that sounds like and then you just kind of blend it to taste. So here's what it is. And then this is without it. I'll, I'll toggle this on and off so you can hear the difference. It's very subtle, uh, but you can see how it will help his vocal in a major way cut through the track. Pretty cool, right? So very subtle, but it's it's interesting. This is called the Haas effect. The Haas Haas effect is just named after a dude, some some dude named Haas, H A A S, and uh, he's the first one to really put a nail in it in the idea that if you're if you're like in a tunnel or something and you're talking the reflections are so close to you that it's hard to tell when the beginning and end of a reflection uh is right and it can be co quite confusing if you're standing in a, in a small tunnel and, and just yelling <laughs> i don't know why you would do that but yeah you, know, you know you get into things in life uh much different than standing like at a mountain range where you can yell and you can say alex 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 right and, and like a little while later you hear it 
repeated and uh, and in that case you can clearly hear the beginning and end of that reflection well the Haas is exactly the opposite of that and that's setting a delay anywhere between 10 and 40 and so in this case I just sat one on the left at 18 and one on the right at 27 so they're not really distinguishable uh, but they just kind of thicken the vocal all around I make sure my uh, width is all the way up mix is all the way up I kind of just play with these until I got it to taste and then very little feedback you don't want a whole ton of feedback because you don't want to use it as an effect so much as you just want it to thicken up to support his vocal if it's going to be a lead vocal okay so another thing that I would do considering that this is at 18 and that's at 27 is I might throw a delay on there but then I would set the pre delay to like I don't know 30 or something like that maybe I'll just bring the room size down uh, put this at like uh, I don't know 500 maybe something very subtle and again open up the width I'll put it there and the diffusion and let's just see what that sounds like okay so let's listen to it again raw well we'll listen to it with the effect and then uh you'll get used to it but once i take in you'll not really know how it's affected but once i take it away is when you will notice it so that's the original. So pretty groovy, right? I know. So it's very subtle changes, but there's now two of them, and they're both just helping to support that lead vocal, and he sounds thicker, and he sounds like he's in a space. And so that's that's a pretty cool way to go about uh, fixing up some vocals if you just want to get it to poke a little bit through. But let's move on here to the delay one, okay? And uh, if for this, we're going to use the the Rhodes loop, I think. Let's, let's listen to it. Let me just uh, make sure this loops. Yeah, so it's pretty groovy. It's got a nice chillin' kind of uh, vibe to it. But on the delay one, why don't we throw uh, what's considered a slapback delay? A slapback delay is anything that's in, um, I th it's like 90 to 180 or something like that. So let's just choose like 150 milliseconds here. And uh, and at one single repeat, so it only repeats once. It doesn't uh, It doesn't keep doing it. And then we'll just turn this guy up. All right, let's have a listen. Oh, first of all, make sure my sends are all here. Yeah, they're all on post. Okay, let's check it out. Right? So let's listen. So to the average person, they wouldn't know what they're hearing, but they would know that once I mute it, something's changed, right? And they, they couldn't quite put their finger on it. To me, it's just that this adding this delay, slapback delay here just fills it out a tiny little bit. It almost like it adds sustain uh, to the track. There's no empty gaps in the audio like here and here uh, where there's just hardly any sound at all. Check it out. Yeah, so I mean, you can decide whether you like that or not. And of course, on the reverb, if we want to get interesting, why don't we put like, I don't know, let's do like 40 second, milliseconds of, of pre -delay, delay and let's hear it. Yeah, so pre delay, you've seen me use that twice now. Is it pretty, pretty useful uh, just for? just for separating uh, your track from the delay so it doesn't get bogged down, right? Because you can, you, can, you can hear plenty of cases of uh, tracks suffering with too much 
uh, it's too much reverb and if they had just used a little more pre-delay maybe you'd be able to cut away their vocal from the reverb tails a little bit better but uh, so just play around with pre-delay and then you can just kind of use it in conjunction with some other stuff I don't know why I chose to do 42.7 <laughs> milliseconds but I knew this was at 150 uh, and I wanted it to be a little bit longer whereas in this case uh, it was at between 18 and 27 so for me 30 or 40 would be perfectly fine there Okay, so that's the delay one, and that's just setting it up as a slapback delay. And of course, if you don't like that, you can go back to using the, the beat divisions here, and you got your 16th notes and your offset, and of course, your feedback mix and your cut. And then again, in here, you have your feedback effects, and you know now what that does. And uh, and so that's, that's basically that. Well, why don't we move along to a little guitar section that I came up with, I, I don't know, just a few days ago for no real particular reason and uh, let's just have a listen to that without any effects on it. Hmm. So to me this is the perfect candidate uh, for some slapback delay with reverb uh, don't you think and I think even some chorus but I might put the chorusing on uh, you know what I'll even add another effects track and we'll just we'll put the chorus on that how does that sound doo -doo -doo. I used to teach guitar one-on-one -on -one. I don't know why this popped into my head it is it's got to be the most demotivating thing ever because this this snotty nose little kid will come over his mom thinks he's a genius and he needs to learn some music and then the kid will come over and then never practice and after like a few months of you just absorbing his mom's money for no reason at all you finally ask the kid okay why do you want to learn guitar and you know inside that's because he want to pick up he wants to pick up chicks or something like that and so then i'll just straight out ask him you just want to learn how to pick up chicks with a guitar and there and he nine out of ten times is like yeah and it's like okay well here's how you play freaking wonder wall and some stupid ed sheeran song shoot me in the face or whatever it's called and uh and then they go off happily and you tell the parents uh you tell the mom like the kid doesn't really want to play guitar uh he just you put him in like hockey or something else like that and then she going oh not my son my son's a genius he's just not engaged and you just feel like saying like no simple bitch your kid's a dumbass he wants to play hockey give him a stick and a hockey puck throw him out onto the curb and you taught him how to play wonderwall so he can pick up women to spread his demon seed around when he finally decides to procreate and uh get the hell out of my house but you can't say that you just got to go yes well maybe i'm just not the right teacher for him right like it's my fault that i can't engage some idiot and uh and uh yeah okay, i'm gonna put an end to this rant right now uh <laughs> okay so a uh, little chorus on there do -ba do make sure that we're sending it and uh yeah i'm just making a decision now whether i'm going to send the guitar group uh master or each one independently i'm going to send all of them independent let's see just crank all these up more control this way you know what i'm saying that way you can automate the sends if you really wanted to do it well so as i was saying a little chorus would sound good so why don't we uncheck the chorus and have a listen <laughs> That actually sounds pretty good. I don't know that I really even want to change any of that stuff. Yeah, I like it. That's like a first. Anyway, okay. Well, it works for me. Yeah, no, I'm not going to change it. Just you got to learn. I have to learn when things are good just to leave it alone. Um, a little slapback delay I think is in, in need here. Do, do, do. There it is. Let's make it one sixty three. And then a little bit of reverb and let's 
bump this up to like 50 something maybe make it a little bit longer of a tail around there do some late mix here bring up the sparkle and yeah width what the hell let's check it out You know what I never tried is grouping effects tracks. Can you do that? No, I guess not. Yeah, it says group, but I can't do it. Oh, damn, that'd be great, because then I'd have an overall mute button. Anyway, uh, this is it, dry. And then let's just add in everything. And so I'll take these out one by one, and you'll see uh, the the difference that they make by being left in there. Pretty cool. Again, three subtle effects all accumulated to make one major difference. And this is another one of those things where if I didn't tell you that that stuff was on there, you might just think it's normal, right? But then if I all of a sudden took them away, you'd be like, oh, something's missing. The guitar sounds thin, right? Yeah, so anyway, that's it, folks. That's the delay one and the delay two. Remember the Haas effect. Remember the slap back. Everything outside of that, you can just kind of dick around with. And uh, But I hope you find something useful inside those tricks. I think you will. Notice how I put them on sends, though. I put them on, or sorry, uh, inst what are they called? Effects tracks. <laughs> <laughs> and not in line with the with the guitar like I could have put all that stuff on here sure but what if you have a drum kit and you want to share that reverb so it sounds like the guitar player and drummer are in the same room right what if you have a vocal and you've got a, a few vocalists and you want you want to thicken them up or whatever like it's all you know it's it's good to have them on sends like this uh, and then you can just change the amount that's getting sent to them rather than having uh, one two three four four different versions of delay one and delay two and reverb and chorus like that's a lot right and very likely if you're doing a pro mix you're not using these you're using some expensive plugin right and uh and to and they'll chug your cpu so if you're gonna have i would have to have four of these on my track already in order to do what this one is doing and so that just seems ridiculous if i need a different delay i'll make another uh effects track and then i'll put another delay in there and change it differently and and send it throughout i mean everybody's got their thing uh, and how they do stuff but i found and uh many pro mixers have also found that putting them on sends is often the way to go things that you put in line with the track are like you can put a compressor here and and stuff like that i could have put the chorus on there i'll probably not use the chorus for anything else uh but even compressors and chorus you can put them down there and you can parallel compress them okay all right, guys, I hope that did something for you. Don't forget to subscribe, but you probably already have because we love each other. Is that right? That's weird. Uh, and uh, I'll remind you that I'm taking projects now. If you want to send me your projects and then I'll dick around with them and display them on YouTube and cast them out to the world, uh, then do that. And I'll plug your SoundCloud or your whatever else you got, your YouTube, your Facebook, whatever you want me to. And uh, you got to be a subscriber, though. For me to do it that's the that's the one that's the one uh requirement that i ask of you okay and uh, you can just email those over to me if you have comments questions or suggestions for future shows uh then just dump them down below into the comment section there i'd love to uh, help you out and this channel is for you and so i need to know what you want to know and i will make those videos you just got to let me know okay all right guys be good to each other we'll talk soon ciao We'll